Hello, YouTube! This is me, I'm actually doing a gameplay video, not a griefing video. It won't show you hand unless I do a webcam. This is a person that knows my other account, Joka999. There's more. He is walking you around. You own an AARP Medicare Complete Plan insured through United Healthcare. Your benefits could also include vision and hearing coverage and prescription drug coverage that's accepted at pharmacies nationwide. The Pharmacy Saver Program makes prescriptions available for as little as two dollars at thousands of pharmacies. United Healthcare has worked with these pharmacies to get low costs for our members. Enroll today. And enjoy advantages like these for as low as a zero dollar monthly premium beyond what you pay for Medicare Part B. Now is the time to look at your options. Start getting this guy the knows me on Joka 999. Insured through United Healthcare. Remember, the annual enrollment period begins and ends earlier this year. Call United Healthcare today about an AARP Medicare really? plan. Really? <laughs> That's amazing. A person like me. Don't wait. Call now. Are you ready for this season's new look? The buzz is sexy skin, and you can have it too. The secret is the deep cleansing wash from Proactive. It keeps your chest, back, and shoulders clear. And it's yours free with this special new offer. I get breakouts on my back, and it's like... Uh, yeah, I got this active body wash works so quickly. Get proactive for only $19.95, and the deep cleansing <laughs> wash is free. I recommended proactive deep cleansing body wash to almost all my yes, clients. Yes, it is too epic. Their chest and their back, and they can wear a little strapless dress and feel really free. Get proactive's best deal right now. You get the deep cleansing wash. A $72 value for just $19.95. We even guarantee results for your money. And that feels great. Act fast and get overnight shipping with Proactive next day. Call 1 800 569 6375 because sexy skin is always in. Uh, oh, yeah. I lit the candle. I, I knew I wouldn't do it, and I some, uh, something made me do it. And the second the mask. Lit. Uh, he is letting me place my hand on The flame jumped 15 inches from the candle to the wreath. Up like a ball of fire. I don't know what. It was seriously like something made me do it. I, I totally remember the whole, like, every second of it. Like, it was, you know, like, it wasn't me doing okay. it. Okay. It was like, walk over, light a match, light the candle, the whole breeze. And this person is a fan of me. Room, I can tell. Immediately, I've never seen anything <laughs> happen that fast. Filled with black smoke. To the point where I had to literally crawl out below the smoke, literally fire so fast, and just thick black <laughs> coughing, choking. I grabbed my yes, the water. The he is my bestest friend. They're up in the attic with axes, breaking through the ceiling and the floor up there, and they're you know pulling down chunks of plaster off the wall. So basically, the room is destroyed. That whole half of the house is destroyed. But the fire's out. The firemen, I realized, was a little spooked when they spoke, I don't know, sort of uneasy and a little surprised. The fire chief was at the house, and I and I said, you know, I, I don't know, it's just so weird. It's like light bulbs in the fire, and don't you think that's so, it's a little, it doesn't make me feel very welcome that, you know, we move in and we have a fire like two weeks late. And he said, well, 
I didn't really want to tell you this because I didn't want to scare you. I didn't want you to feel uncomfortable in the house, but you know who used to own the house. The woman that built the house, who's the only other person that's ever lived in the house, was the heiress to the Diamond Match fortune. Whose father started Diamond Matches, who was badly burned and disfigured in a fire in her father's match factory as a teenager. And so she built that house so that she could live in privacy and yet live in a sort of grand manner because she had the family's fortune. He is be right back. in the house her entire life. and actually died in the house. He said that he had grown up not far from her, and as a kid, they always wanted, he and his friends always wanted to try to see her because it was sort of like a town. They would try to go trick-or-treating at her house, but it was always the butler that would deliver the treat. And so they never actually saw her, but she was never seen by anyone ever. And if she was, she would always wear a gray veil. And that is the creepiest thing because that's the woman that we saw walking in the woods. My husband and I both said that was what we saw. And both of us had the exact image of a woman in a gray veil. I almost don't, it almost creeps me out to say anything now because it makes me feel like something, you know, something bad is gonna happen. Like I almost don't wanna talk about it now even. It really is something that I definitely felt like we were not wanted there. You know, eventually we sold the house. I just, I couldn't keep on living there. I just couldn't, I never could, could ever feel like it was my house. It was always her house. I grew up in uh, Mobile, Alabama, and primarily throughout the South. And there's a real tradition for, for ghosts and for voodoo and of, of non-believers, but uh, underneath the surface, I think everybody really did believe that there was a, a supernatural world. I'm going to be making, I'm going to keep on making, for a little bit. Some connection to. My aunt Angel is uh, my father's sister, and they were much younger than years apart. And Angel lived with my grandmother, so it was really her house. And so Angel was my playmate every summer. She was the closest person to my age. She loved to scare me. She was always telling me that story. So this is always, there was a ghost man in my room. It, it used to scare me to death. It was always creepy being there for a lot of different reasons. And it was always sounds. You always heard crickets. It felt like you could hear the wind because it was so quiet. It was always those elements in that house. So it always take me a while to fall asleep because I just, I just lay there and listen. And that was, uh, I would read the Bible to her on the front porch. I would just sit down on the porch and she would uh, make some lemonade. I would just have her pick out psalms and gospel. She was first amazed that I could read. I mean, obviously, it was a different time in, in the United States, so my grandmother had a you know, third grade education. And she could read, but she, she didn't read really, really well. 
aside from the you know, spiritual aspect of, you know, of being what it was. It was an important document because of all the elements that it had in it. In the back of the Bible, uh, the notes were, you know, you had everyone's birthday written down, the name, where they were born, who the birth parents were. It's sort of like a, it's a record, sort of a, a history. Um, Everything was sort of kept uh, in there, sort of pulled up in, in the back of it. You were holding that you are the gatekeeper of the family. That's kind of what you are. And somehow, somewhere between you leaving uh, after that, that summer of first grade and going back home and then you know, starting second grade, she she lost the Bible. And my grandmother had been tearing apart the house looking for it. And she uh, she was kind of distraught that you know when it came back, we were in the middle of doing our thing now. So it was, it was a very big deal that it went missing. It was absolutely very three dimensional, but you couldn't make out a face. You could feel the presence. And you definitely knew that it was trying to communicate something. <laughs> It starts with back pain and a choice. Take Advil now, and maybe up to four in a day. Or choose a lead and two pills for a day free of pain. Way to go, coach. She's had these shoes a long time. They're kind of my thing. And they were looking nasty. Wild. But I used Tide and Tide Whisper, and look at them now. Now they can be my thing forever. Yay. That's my Tide. What's yours?